my people. Now, you all know I like used bikes. I think all bikes have a ton of potential, and you can basically use them for whatever you want, no matter what kind of bike you have. That said, for the first few episodes of Project Used Bikes, I was doing bikes that have kind of uh, some pretense of being sporting or like, competitive bikes. The BMX bikes are highly customizable and designed to take a beating, and the mountain bike has gone through a really long history of things being done to it and changed. This time I wanted to talk about something that's a little more in line with what most people would consider to be a used bike. Something a bit better for urban cycling. The story behind this bike is kind of interesting. This one's not one of my project bikes. So the boss at Cyclepath has friends that give him used bikes from time to time. And this particular bike that you're about to see is an old Nishiki International. And it's a fantastic old steel touring bike made with fantastic materials, good quality components. It's a little older, but everything's still in great shape. And it was given to my boss just because the original owners had gotten new bikes that were a bit more comfortable. That said, this old bike is still plenty comfortable, plenty fast, and it's going to be super reliable because it's made of steel and it's in great shape. This bike is way too good. Yeah, it's technically a used bike, but it's in basically new shape. It's like it's never been ridden. And everything that has been worn out, like the tires, has been replaced pretty recently. So I'm looking forward to working this. There's a few little issues here and there that need to be addressed, but really nothing major. The bike actually rides as it is. The only thing that stands out is there's some issues with the rear derailleur, but other than that, almost ready to ride. This is a cool feature you don't see every day. The derailleur has a slot in it, so you can unhook the chain really easily without a chain tool. So the first thing is to address the derailleur. The problem is that the little threaded area where the bolt goes in to pinch on the cable is kind of stripped out, but I've got the right parts hanging around so it's easy enough to slide a new piece in there so it can pinch the cable properly. So once I have the chain and wheels off the bike, I'm going to give it all a good cleaning. This isn't just so I have a chance to inspect for damage that I wouldn't otherwise see, but it's also just good maintenance. Clean bikes last longer, it's just how it is. These old brake pads still have tons of life in them, it's just that the surface layer is a bit hardened up from the age. So all I gotta do is sand off that surface layer and reveal some fresh rubber and the pads will stop like new. This bike originally came with a drop bar, and it was converted to the riser bar at some point. Now the cables are a little bit old and rough, so I'm giving new housing all around and fresh shift cables, but because I plan to switch it back to a period correct with the drop bar at some point, I'm going to reuse the brake cables at this point and just make sure that the housing's a little bit longer than it needs to be so that I can trim it into place later. So it's still winter out, it's kinda nasty outside, and in Mississauga there's a lot of salt in the ground all winter long. So for a little bit of extra protection, I'm using a ceramic wet lube on the bike. The bearings on this bike are running pretty smooth, 
but the front hub's a little rougher than the other bearing sets, so I figure it couldn't hurt to give it a little bit of a service. This is Finish Line Speed Degreaser. I love this stuff. It's similar to brake clean, but it's safe for bikes, and it's great for cleaning out parts during bearing service. So it's great for cleaning the cups, the cones, the bearings, and the axles before regreasing everything and putting it all back together. The test ride is always my favorite part about working with used bikes. This bike actually runs amazing, it runs like a brand new bike. The old friction shifters work great, the brakes feel nice and snappy, and the bike accelerates like lightning. Like for an older bike, I'm really impressed with this thing, it rides great. So this is pretty cool. I managed to get my hands on a period correct mid 80 set of drop bars with an SR Suntour stem and Shimano D50 brake levers. This is pretty awesome. It's not exactly what was on the bike originally, but it's pretty damn close. So like I said earlier, I cut the shift cables and the housing for both cable sets to be a little bit longer than it has to be, just so I could trim it into length for this setup here. These old friction shifters, uh, they're not quite as good as the ones that were on the Rise of Our setup, but they are still in good shape and they're a sun tour so they match up with the rest of the drivetrain and like everything else, it's period correct for the bike, so perfect, I'm happy. I'm not sure if these pedals are original to the bike, but they're definitely period correct. So just to match up with them, I'm going with metal cages and leather straps. It's going to be a really good look. Bike geometry has come a long way, but old bikes are still fairly comfortable. The big problem with old setups like this is the old bar tape they used to use is garbage. It's hard and it feels like plastic. So I'm going with some modern cork tape just to make everything nice and squeezy. This bike may be the ultimate urban bike. It's relatively high performance, it's relatively comfortable, it's super reliable, and it's got a bit of nostalgia value to it. It also looks absolutely fantastic. Really can't go wrong with this for a commuter or something to ride the bike with the family or just something to get into cycling for fun. After filming this video, we actually sold this bike at the shop for a couple hundred bucks and for the value, it's an amazing bike. At the end of every episode of Project Used Bikes, 
I always want to go for a little ride with the bikes, test them out, just show what they're kind of capable of, but the weather's horrible outside. There's over a foot of snow. We can't go and ride right now, especially with the skinny little tires. So instead of going for a ride, we went for a photo shoot. We're going for that kind of bike porn aesthetic, making the bikes look really good and trying to make cycling look as cool as possible, cheesy though that sounds. So that's it for this episode of Project Use Bikes. I think everything worked out pretty well, but I wish I could have gotten more riding in. It's almost spring though, so pretty soon I'll be able to do more riding, make these videos a little more entertaining. Instead of looking at specific bikes after this point, I want to make future episodes of Project Use Bikes more about looking at specific cyclists that I know and uh, what they use bikes for. There's one guy who attaches car horns to his bikes, there's one dude who's absolutely nuts with the whips on his full suspension mountain bike. There's going to be some good stuff coming up soon. I guess watch this space? That's a thing, right? <laughs>